In the crazy year of 2020, Silver Radar was the only signature event that we could pull off. So if you weren't there, this is how it might look like if you were. You pack your boat and drive over half of Europe and curse the lucky ones that could just sail over to Svenborg. You pass a bridge which doesn't seem to be a big deal at the moment, but we'll come back to that later. In the morning, you meet Jan Markus, who is such a great guy that he cranes his, yours and almost every other sailboat in the first and seascape fleet. That's just who he is. Then you go over and listen to what Jure has to say about the weather. Usually he is also one of the competitors on Silver Radar, but not this year. This year he is working on weather prediction tools for Vende Globe Race, so he joined us via video call. He didn't have good news for us though. Low or no winds all the way around island of Funen. In the afternoon you have the first opportunity to look around. And you realize that you are not alone on this journey. There are 311 sailors just like you getting ready for the solo challenge of the sea. What's done is done. Just before you have the last decent sleep, you have a lovely evening around the grill pit with the rest of the community. The dawn rises and is the day of the race. Your friends float out of the harbor and so do you. There is a strong current in the channel where the start is, but there is no wind, just like you reset. The 18s and the 24s are the first to start and they are the smallest sailboats in the race. They have to pedal to stay on the right side of the starting line. Well, at least you have a current. Yeah, and at least it won't be less wind than this, right? Definition of a bad start. <laughs> I think uh, the wind instrument is broken, it's not turning. Uh, seems they are all broken. Half an hour later, it's your turn. The same drift at long as before. Some already need assistance to get behind the line, and you struggle as well. It's stressful, but at the same time, it sure is a pleasant sight and a feeling to be a part of the largest single handed race in the world competing in the most numerous one design class, the first and Seascape 27. You're not here to beat everyone else, but to push yourself above yourself from yesterday. Soon after the start, there is a bunch of boats stranded in the arm of the channel. Your heart goes out to them, yet you cannot deny that it feels good to gain places. In the end, there is a part of you that wants to be faster than everyone else. One of the options how you can get out of this situation is also to to, to tow your uh, boat away by by not even swimming but walking. You have to time the time until the water brings you to the starting line. <laughs> and yeah. uh, the sails are there just so you can say it's a sailboat race. <laughs> I'm very fast now. This time it's a real pleasure. Lesson, when you think there is grass and you have a lifting keel, you should lift your fucking keel. What's the time? No half time three. You need coffee then. The wind picks up. You sail under the first bridge in a nice sunny weather and you think to yourself, oh, this is actually nice. When the night starts to creep in, the cold comes too. Temperature falls quickly under 10 degrees, but there is still enough wind to keep you busy during the night. You sail upwind over the most northern part of the island. Technically you're halfway around, but you know better than that. There is that treacherous little belt passage in front of you. The next morning the beauty of the dawn distracts you. You forget all about the discomfort of the night and the closing window to catch the favorable current through the little belt. I did that, I took my phone out and read the message from Europe. Don't go ashore! What is this? Existential crisis upon existential crisis upon another existential crisis. 
In front of you it's the second bridge of the race, the one that you drove over a couple of days ago. You notice a pack of sailboats standing still just behind it. It's not a good sign, it means that you miss the time window to go with the flow. Everything looks calm, yet your heart rate goes up. You can feel the current picking up your boat and pushing it in the wrong direction. Inertia and apparent wind keep you going for a short while, but it's all for nothing. It's hard to look when another fellow seascaper is swept right into the bridge pillar. Luckily, he just scraped it. After a while, you give in and anchor yourself, to at least stay in the same place. You have a bit of a rest and try not to pay too much attention to the rest of the fleet slowly catching up to you. This is, we're gonna stay here until 11. How much hope do we have for Jure? Well, I would, I, would, I would say relatively little. I got a message from Facebook. It says, remove the first, um, the first four letters from your name. And say fuck for that. So I'm fucking fucker. I just learned that you will not get a finisher t-shirt if you made it over the top. The battle with your mind begins. In the WhatsApp group, one by one, your colleagues are declaring that they are giving up. But somehow you gather a bit more strength and push through. You are out of the little belt and the lightest of breezes is back. Ah. You are one of two, one of three sailors left. You and your brother. <laughs> My dad called me and he said, hey, I'm preparing you guys some really nice things. And I said, do you really want me to quit right now because I'm starving? Right? They have about 5% of chance of finish. I'm quite done after this uh, bridge thing. <laughs> it was really exhausting. We bring the wind. I fell asleep and woke on uh, against the bank. Now it's easy when it's wind. So the straw that broke the camel's back was when Yura said that it's going to be less wind in the night than it is right now. And, uh, and, and that put shivers down my spine. You know? So I, I just said, okay, I think I have to re re recalculate everything. Yura, Yura also said that there is 5% chance of finishing. 5%. That's actually much better than saying it's going to be less wind than no wind. <laughs> so. It is, because Jan is saying 5%, that's a lot. That's yeah, exactly, enough. that's what I say, 5%. But in the end, it's too much. It's over for you too. There is no chance to finish in time, so you give up. You're either taking the boat out in Little Belt, or you're motoring back to Svenborg. Right. Once there, you try to hide that you enjoy the non-finisher's gin and tonic, which is without ice and lime. The next morning brought a surprise out of the fog, which no one expected. And here is Bert Forsberg finishing the ultra hard bastard edition of Silver Rudder. <laughs> yeah, Bert! Yeah, you did it! There you go. <laughs> I had no navigation, it's me now. <laughs> My battery said 57%, so I wasn't worried, and then suddenly. But that was no problem until I got into the fog. The only good thing I really did was when there was no wind. 
there is always wind. Did you see that match racing me and Andra said? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I was sure I was going to hit the ground a couple of times. It was so close I could almost touch it. Finish your gin tonic <laughs> with okay. ice and lime. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> and a hot meal oh, that you deserve. I actually got... Uh, how do you say in English? Hall hallucinations. Hallucinations? Yeah. Uh, were they the good one? Ah, I don't know. It's uh, when I got into the fog, I saw uh, ghost ships coming towards me. Oh, uh, it was for real. And then just before they hit me, they sang. Yes. <laughs> that was not the only surprise that day. Even though Reto missed the time limit for about an hour, he's an ultra hard bastard in our book. Yeah, you missed the time limit for an hour. But doesn't matter. But he won the Titan Hard Bastards Award. He fought and sailed the whole way around the island, no matter what. And that is what counts the most. But we are not done yet. There were also brothers Jan and Luca, who almost made it too. They kept going until there was truly no more sense to push on. <laughs> Jan bought me this, I don't know if you know. This was a birthday present last year. So, since we don't see each other, too much he decided that I have to suffer a bit so I'm um, looking forward to um, this year's gift <laughs> silver rather 2021 with wind so uh, it was super cool they are hard bastards in their own league in the end silver rather is not about the shirt it's about pushing yourself and coming out stronger on the other side and even though this is a solo race it doesn't mean that you are going to be alone on this journey <laughs>